Howdy folks, have you ever thought about getting a 3D printer? Let's do uh, 3D printers for dummies today. We're going to do from the very basics, just so that if somebody is, for the very first time, gets a 3D printer, what does he need to know? Or what should he be dealing with? So, let's do this. Howdy folks, welcome back. This is a standard commercial, uh, consumer grade 3D printer. Uh, it's on sale right now, so I'll give you a link provided in the description below to where you can find this particular machine. This is the longer LK5 Pro. I've chosen it today because it's on sale. <laughs> it's a little bit larger than some of the ones that I've had in here and uh, will be having in here, but this one here is a very good printer. And it really represents the basis of uh, the newbie that buys a printer, gets it home, and says, like, what do I do now? What do I, I've got it together. I, I've got everything. W what's the next step? The next step is bed leveling. And bed leveling is not that hard. You have to take your time to do it. Once you get this bed leveling situation figured out, the rest of it is really just uh, icing on the cake at that point. The reason for the leveling is this nozzle has to run parallel to this bed in all locations all the time when it's running and the best way to bed level is uh, probably not the way I'm going to show you but <laughs> where I'm going to show you the old trick that everybody uses and it's with a piece of office paper but let's plug this thing in and we'll go to the control package and we'll do what we call bed leveling because that's really the next step after you put this thing together that's what you're going to be looking at any printer you have 3d that comes in that's that should be probably 90% of them is the next step is to level that bed so we can do this. This is uh, particularly, again, typical. This is a control interface package with this particular printer that works really nice. It's got touch screen. So, yeah, they're all going to be a little different, but the idea of the screen use is the same. So I'm going to power up. So the first thing we're going to be looking for in this case is leveling, which is longer, has a really nice file right there that just says leveling. So you just hit the screen. And it shows you the, the, these are the points. There's five points. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five points on the bed. There's five points here. And the very first thing we're going to do is hit one of these points. And we're going to hit that. And the machine is going to come over to this particular spot in this corner. Now, it's best to let the machine stop when it comes down the Z-axis. That's the up and down to let it stop electrically as to where it believes that's where the nozzle is. You do not want to mechanically push on the push on anything. Now right now it has now found the first point. That that's one that we put right there. Now we're going to do the paper trick. So right now we're at one location and we're going to take this 20 pounds typical office paper, nothing magical, and we're going to stick it under on the bed here and I'm going to go up underneath that nozzle. And what I'm going to do is just sort of like this. And you can just feel, in this case, just a little tiny bit of friction. Actually, that's kind of loose. We could actually tighten that up just a little bit. And we, underneath the bed, you'll find the wheels that are spring-loaded. And you can turn those, oops, yeah, just a little bit, <laughs> again, to adjust. Now, tension and everything paper is kind of a feel thing. But I'm actually pulling on that paper a little bit to try to get it up underneath it's it's kind of like i've got to work the paper up underneath to get it it's really a machine to machine sort of a feel thing you know yeah let's go to the next one i'm going to go to five because that's in the center here where you guys be able to see it really well and again while it's doing all that i can even throw the paper under there if i want now it's in the five position boy that's pretty tight i'm not going to adjust that because it is pretty tight Let's go to two over here in this other corner. And again, I'm going to slap the paper down. And again, just check. And yeah, it's got nice drag. That's all you want. It's just, you know, I need, it takes a little bit of tension to pull the paper out from underneath that nozzle. And we're going to go to the back one. Uh, pick number three here, I guess. Three. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And again, we want the whole bed leveled out. And even sometimes you may have to do this several times to get it right. That's a little bit on the loose side, so I'm going to just adjust that just a yeah, just a hair up from where it's at. Wow, that's yeah, that's fairly tight. Okay, so we'll go to the last one, which is four. 
You could do this several times just to make sure the whole bed is nice and parallel running with the machine because every once in a while you're going to have to come back and do this anyways. Now this one here is really nicely clawed I think. Yeah, it's it's way too loose so we're going to back off the springs, the spring tension of the bed a little bit to lift the bed up there. It's catching the paper now. Now when you first do this, just like I'm doing right now, uh, when you adjust on this side, you know it's going to change that side a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the middle. So I'm hitting number five here on the longer and throw the paper out there and just see how this feels. See if anything weird is going on. There it goes. Now it's stopped. Boy, that's pretty tight. I really don't like it that tight. It's just that tight. Yeah. So obviously something's changed at the front. So. I'm going to go to number one here and go back through. Like I said, this is something you have to take your time and do it several times to make sure you get it absolutely right. And again, it's a little bit, it's a little on the tight side. I'm going to just tighten up my wheel just a little bit to where it's just kind of dragging on the paper a little bit. Yep, that's pretty good. Okay, well, we're two. And the other thing you'll notice is uh, the heat. The, uh, the bed is not hot right now, so things are going to change. And that's a little bit tight. Okay, like I said, as we adjust, you're going to have to chase it around a little bit. I usually do this several times uh, to go through everything just to make sure we've got it right. And I want to feel the paper so that it's about the same tension where I virtually can't push the paper underneath but I can drag it away from the nozzle so there's some friction there. Okay, let's go back to five. Five is the only one that showed to be tight, so curious. It could be a case of we've got a little bit of a dome going on here. I don't, I don't think so, but oh no, that's pretty good there. So the very next thing you're going to want to do now that you've got your uh, printer set up and you've got your bed leveled is you're going to take a piece of filament. And what I do with my filament and again, I'll, <laughs> I'll provide a description in the link below for these pliers. I cut on an angle, so I have a little bit of a point. That's going to help feed this thing in because you've got to put your filament in. And a lot of times I'll bend my filament and, you know, I even run my fingers over it a little few times, get a little warm, and try to get a, like a straight line shot because you're going to squeeze here, in this case, and there's a small tiny hole back here where you're going to shoot this thing through. And you've got to keep your pressure like this maintained because you're keeping the wheel away from the gear that pulls this in, that runs it. So right now you're sort of like freewheeling and you've got to find the hole to where the spool, to where it's going to spool into the uh, Bowden uh, tube, which it just did. So now I'm going to keep feeding it in with my fingers on the pressure here, keeping the, re you know, released and all the way until it hits. Yeah, it'll sort of bang, bottom out is it, the filament is now all the way over to the nozzle so we're we're good to go at that point sometimes it's a little hard to uh, think in terms of newbie ha uh, this filament the spool here which you purchase off of Amazon or eBay or wherever you want to get it this one is PLA plus PLA or PLA plus is great as a good filament to start with on your first machine don't buy ABS or anything fancy weird stuff Get yourself some PLA or PLA plus to start with and make sure in this case the machine desired here is 1.75 millimeter sized PLA. That's what you want. Don't don't buy anything else unless your machine somehow suspects something different. But this is from eSun and you kind of want to know this information down the road for other reasons. So maybe we'll explain why. But right now uh, there's a couple things. I This is a prototype uh, feeder that I bolted on the top here. Normally with this machine it comes off the back so don't don't look at this don't pay <laughs> this is just me you know with my my craziness but i do i change my machines around to the way i like them so this is what i like i also have a little feeding arm over here and again that's something i made with a 3d printer that helps feed this the filament down through but again it's all part of modification. this is custom stuff afterwards you know this is not something you need or have to have when you get your first 3d printer so now we're we're sort of ready to do our first print believe it or not yeah now 
There's a TF card that will come with most printers. I don't like TF cards, so mine's modified and I'm using a full-size SD card, but again, that's something you could get into later, but put your TF card in, fire your machine up, and in this case, it's the longer. It could be somebody else's, and we're gonna look for a file. So that's the very first word we see here on the display is file. And we're gonna look through to see what we want. And in this case, I think with longer, it comes with, uh, see if I can't uh, find something here that, there's LK5 Pro body. There's different things that come on different machines. But the nice thing is, a lot of times they will have, you know, four or something files already preloaded for you. So you can make some cool stuff without getting, you know, crazy. All of these with the LK5 Pro, these are uh, like the whistle is a, an example. Uh, little Mexican train, which I use for my uh, Mexican train gaming night. Uh, but you can make a vase. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you can build. And they'll usually include about four files. So already you don't need anything else. You just got the machine, you've got to set up. And you're going to want to run one of these anyways. Now, the run one that we all run is called the Benchy. And you've probably all seen the Benchy. I don't think I have the Benchy on here, so I'm going to have to add it on here today just for fun. But this is the most, like I said, I'm trying to do the most basic. Uh, ah, there's the Benchy. Okay, boat code. That's, that's you. Okay, so we're going to pick that one and open that file. And it asks if to start printing. You don't have to touch anything. Now, a lot of times I will take a Microsoft towel and just sort of rub the bed off a little bit. Don't ever put pressure on your bed because you're gonna throw the settings off that you just went through with. So, yes, we'll go ahead and we'll build the bench sheet. Now, the first thing that's gonna start up when your printer starts up is it's gonna heat the bed up. And in this case, because of the PLA Plus we're using, the bed is gonna come up to 60, de 60 degrees Celsius. We're working in Celsius. Uh, it's a These machines are kind of metric that way and you just, you get used to it after a while, it, it's really not really a bother. Once it hits 60, then it will fire the nozzle up. The nozzle should come up to around 200 or 210 degrees Celsius. That's gonna be its working temperature, and then we'll get our, what we call our first layer. And when we see our first layer, we're gonna be looking at that first layer to see how it went down on the bed, because that's gonna tell us everything about how good we can print with this machine. So if you see the situation here, you can see the bed, that's this right here, is now pretty warm. It's a 60 degrees Celsius. The nozzle, I believe at 200, I believe is the working temperature we've got today, but we'll find out here in a second because it's at 198 and still heating up that nozzle. 199 and I think, yeah, 200 should be the, the go. Okay, there it goes. And now we're gonna come over here to this home location, which is up in this corner. The machine will do that first. It'll lay a little bit of uh, plastic or PLA down on the bed first. Then it will come over and it'll make a large square. It's kind of an outline of whatever it is you're printing. And it's kind of a good thing too because when you see the outline, at that point you can actually see if your bed leveling worked or not because that outline's kind of got to look right. And we're gonna talk about that in a second here. I'm gonna show you a diagram of what that should look like. But here we go, yep, and now we're gonna make the little benchy. And right away, everything's looking really good because it's laying the plastic down, it's melting it, and it's sticking. Yep, sticking pretty good. I got a little bit of goofy hair stuff. Don't worry about that sort of thing. That's really not something that's gonna be a big deal. It's not gonna you know, cause a problem or anything down the road. Uh, there is some junk left over from some other prints that I was running, but now you can see the printer is now starting and it's laying down the actual boat inside of that ring and that that's where we'll actually build what we call the benchy. So when we talked about the uh, layer line, uh, that first layer with leveling the bench, this is what you don't want to see with your uh, first line or your first layer that's going down. You don't want it high and rounded or something. What you're really looking for is something like this where it's more of a, like a, a flat oval that's sitting right down. You don't want it real low, and if you see any kind of digging in here, then you've gone too low. So you sort of tweak it around a little, with the machine a little bit till you get this kind of nice oval kind of flat down line. Uh, I would show it to you with the camera, but it's, you know, it, it is what it is. The benchy, in the, as a matter of fact, this is what a benchy, or this is what one looks like, and it's really just a test to make sure that the printer is doing a nice job and there's nothing, you know, nothing spooky or anything strange going on. It'll really show you the quality of how good your prints are going to be coming out. 
that's when you want to print something that you know that you're really after but uh, we call it the Benchy because it's kind of like benchmarks the whole idea of whether the 3d printer is set up right and it's ready to go and it looks good to me right here well that's pretty basic but obviously you're going to want to print more than just benches so i'm going to show you some software that you can get it's free and the very first thing you're going to want to download and install in your computer whether it's pc mac or uh, linux i'm pretty sure yeah pretty sure linux works as well with it is called cura and cura is what we call the slicer program it takes an stl stl file and it converts it to a g code g code is what this reads uh so does a cnc machine in fact, even a laser it uses G-code in order to tell the stepper motors, you know, where to be, when, what to do. And the 3D printers, same thing. It uses G-code. But when you create a drawing or you get into a, a, a print, it'll usually be an STL, STL file. So that's going to convert it for you. So you need Cura. You have to, you just, you got to download Cura, put it in, and that will give you a strong piece of software it's open source so it's, it's free and it will allow you to access files and change the g-code which can be read by this machine and in fact cura will actually write to the tf card or sd card in my case and allow me to put the file on the card and then the machine can read the card and say oh do you want me to print this yes i do you know it's really it's simple it's easy but i'm going to give you uh first i'll show you the uh Make sure it's cura.org and not somebody else's uh, stuff because you don't want to be you know, downloading from scammers or junk. So I'll show you the file. The other place you can go, which you can print, you, you have like a million files that you can choose from, is a place called Thingiverse. And I'll show you that too. Uh, also provide a link for the download for the uh, Cura and for the download for Thingiverse. Thingiverse is a huge catalog of STL files. Yes. And you can look through there and find something you want to print bring it over to your computer by downloading. Then take that file to Cura. Once it's in Cura, then you can do what we call the slicer, where we slice through and it looks through and it creates a G code for it. You can also name the file, which helps sometimes too. And at that point, you can bring that TF card, or in my case, SD card, out to the machine, plunk it in, and it will print using that. Now. There are some dirty STL files out there sometimes that don't print right. Just be warned because sometimes something might go wrong. But if you've taken your time and you've set your bed leveling up, the rest of your machine should pretty much do what it's supposed to do without any problems, really. You, you know, it's it's that good. Yeah, you know, and this this machine here is the quietest one I think I've ever... It's, it is the quietest 3D printer I've ever had in here. It's amazing how quiet this one runs. A lot of the older ones I used to have were really noisy. You could hear them through running through the whole house. Well, so there you have it. Uh, we're just about finished <laughs> making the second Benchy. <laughs> I think I'll mail that off to somebody. <laughs> the uh, basics of running a 3D printer, they're really not that hard. And if you don't want to get into all the drafting and CAD and software, stuff like that, you can still print stuff. And like I said, I'll give you links for Thingiverse which you can download. There's a million files for free that you can download from there. And also Cura, which you'll have to convert that software or that download into a file that can be read by any 3D printer at that point because it's in G-code. Uh, I'll also give you a download link. Uh, there's a buy link for this thing. Uh, I'll also have a, a link for the uh, pliers I used. I'll even put in a link for the uh, filament, I guess, just so that this is recommended filament. It's good filament to use for a 3D printer because there is some uh, variable quality of uh, PLA and PLA Plus out there. So I'll give you something that's decent to use if you're, because you know, want to buy a, a roll or a spool. You're going to need to buy, if you buy a 3D printer, you're going to need to buy a spool of filament anyways. And a spool will last a very incredible long time and do a lot of projects for you. So it's really, uh, that part is amazing too. You'll really be surprised. And something as simple as like the microwave handle, you know, on the microwave door breaks or something, and you just sit down, you draw it out, and you print a new one or something, or find one on in Thingiverse sometimes. Thingiverse has all kinds of crazy things from car parts, uh, wood tools and stuff. It has stuff for fixing up these printers to customize them a little bit. It has a lot of, of course, the kitty toy stuff and all that is on there by the hordes too, but there's also everything from pencil holders and uh, uh, iPhone uh, caddies, you know, stuff like that. 
there's a, just an incredible array, a whole world of 3D stuff going on. 3D is still kind of a, it's in a slow growth mode for some reason. It's not as, uh, it didn't take off or become as popular as I think they thought it would, but it is still something that's really almost every household should have one because you can just make what you need. If you need to replace something or repair something, a lot of times it's like, I'll oh, just 3D print one and that'll be the end of the problem. So, uh, sorry about the long, <laughs> long show today, but was trying to cover all the bases. If you're a newbie and you're thinking about buying a 3D printer and you're not sure what you're getting into, I'm hoping we covered a little bit of that for you so we could help clear that up a little bit and make you feel a little bit better. And please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, and uh, Thursday we have a draw and some other new cool, st cool stuff to look at. So thanks for looking in again, and uh, I'm over and out. <laughs>